Kitten Internet. I am back. I am playing, as you can see above my head, my Magic 6, the Mandate of Heaven. By the way, none of the subtitles of my Magic 6, 7, or 8, uh, actually 8 actually does have relevance. 6 and 7 don't. The subtitles are completely made up. It's kind of like how when uh, Bethesda started making the Elder Scrolls, they just tried to sound make something that sounded cool. The Mandate of Heaven is specifically referring to the Chinese Mandate of Emperors, if I remember correctly. This has absolutely nothing to do with that or any type of mandate, regardless of what the opening FMV that you're going to be hearing shortly says. I will be playing through the FMV. Um, I'm going to alter the audio of the sound so you can actually hear what the FMV is saying, because it is voiced. And then I will alter it back. Uh, let's bump this up. And launch my Magic 6. And apologies for the keyboard audio. I can't do much about that without swapping keyboards. And I don't feel like it. 3DO. They came from the depths of the void. An ancient enemy of an ancient people. No one knows why they hate us so. Or why they have made war upon us. Some say the struggle against their evil is the mandate of heaven. Though their origins and purpose are shrouded in mystery, their plan is simple. They travel, they land, and then they conquer. Now, they are here on our world to do to us what they have done to so many others. And they will do it, unless someone stops them. Much to learn before you can deal with the likes of those monsters. Since the arrival of the devils, foul creatures and evil that. spirits have appeared throughout the land. Hey, look, it's the same FMV again. These signs and omens can have but one meaning. That your destiny is part of the Mandate of Heaven. Alright, I'm going to Alt-Tab and drop the volume so you don't get blasted by the rest of the audio. That's about where it was before. Alright, go back in. And welcome to Might and Magic 6, the Mandate of Heaven. So... That FMV, ignore all of it. I'm completely serious. I think they made the FMV before they made any element of the game whatsoever. Uh, here's the important bits. Those four figures, two of which had um, impossible waists, none of which had feet that could easily be seen, and all of them swinging around like this constantly, that's supposed to be your party. Uh, Falagar is an NPC who I actually didn't meet until my second time through the game to show you how important that NPC is. Um, you're obviously the best of the best warriors, which is why you're fighting demons and dragons, and you're level 1. Which, mind you, that's the best that Falagar could do training-wise, was getting you up to first level. Um, they reused part of the FMV twice, which I love. Uh, they show you swimming, which you can't actually swim in this game. That's actually the Magic 7 that you can swim. Um, what other fun things do they show in there that make absolutely no sense? Um, none of the narration makes any sense whatsoever, by the way. 
I mean, it is true that one day foul demons arrived, but, um, yeah, that's about it. So, let's go ahead and make a new game. Now, there is audio narration here. I'm not going to worry about it. So, we're just going to step over and create a party. So, what has happened? Basically, you are on an expedition from King Roland. If any of you have actually played... Well, first off, a lot of you watching have probably already played Might and Magic 6. But if you haven't, if you've played he, the, any of the Heroes of Might and Magic series, Heroes of Might and Magic 1 happens before Might and Magic 6. Heroes of Might and Magic 2 happens before Might and Magic 6. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 and Might and Magic 6 happen at the same time. I might be mistaken on the order of that. Um... You can tell from how fast those flames are flickering that this is an older game that's running at oh god's y number of frames per second. I don't want to count. I'm pretty certain it's in the tens of thousands of frames per second. So this is your default party. The default party is terrible. Don't do it. Um, you have six classes total. Knight, Paladin, Cleric, Archer, Sorcerer, and Druid. What it is is that the primary classes are the ones on the left, Knight, Cleric, and Sorcerer. These are the three classes that the other three classes are combinations of them. So a Paladin is a combination Knight and Cleric. An Archer is a combination Sorcerer and Knight. And, sorry, Sorcerer and Knight. And a Druid is a combination Cleric and Sorcerer. Um, each of the classes start with different stats. Um... I mean, it's, these stats are really tiny. They're basically a rounding error, so it's not that big of a deal anyway. Each of the classes also start with their own weapon skill and magic skill, usually. Uh, Knight starts with armor instead. And two skills of your choice that you choose between the available nine skills, which are also based off of what class you start as. Um, also, each of the classes have two promotions. Uh... You do quests to get the promotion. Some of the promotions are really easy, like the paladin. Pro the first paladin promotion is the easiest quest in the game. You go walking. That's it. There's no enemies. There's no question. You're actually told where to go. Uh, actually, I don't think you're told directly where to go, but it's fairly obvious where to go. And that's it. Some of the quests are extremely difficult. The second paladin quest is to go slay a dragon, if I remember correctly. Or no, these are knight quests, not paladin quests, sorry. Um, paladin quest was to go slay a dragon, which is not easy early on in the game. Go slay a specific dragon, that is. It has to be a named dragon. Um, so, the way the game is meant to be played is that you should have some type of balance between a might party and a magic party. Um, the default party that you see here, Paladin, Archer, Cleric, Sorcerer, or Pax, that is supposed to be a balanced party. The problem is that they didn't make this game very balanced. And having a knight-type character doesn't help as much as you would think. Um, so their hit point and classes have varying amounts of hit points and spell points that they get per level. Uh, knights get the most sorcerers and druids get the fewest and that's really the only reason to take on a knight is hey look i have somebody that has all the spell points or all the hit points yes they have zero spell points they have no magic um that's it there's no real reason to take a knight with you because magic is so much more powerful for so long of the game and then at the end of the game it doesn't particularly matter either way because it's too easy so, my typical party actually looks like this. Cleric, Sorcerer, 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 or alternately, Cleric, Druid, Sorcerer, Sorcerer, or Cleric, Cleric, Sorcerer, Sorcerer. The reason why I have a party like this is that the mages end up with a lot of different skills. Um, sorcerers have four types of magic, fire, air, water, and earth. Clerics have three types of magic mind, body, and spirit, and it's rough trying to shove everything onto a single character, especially one sorcerer. That's generally a bad idea. In addition, as mentioned before, the spells are usually more 
useful than any type of hit points or something like that, so there's not really much of a reason to take a knight. And paladins and archers are basically clerics and sorcerers, respectively, without mirror magic, which I'll get to later, and also without good amounts of spell points, so there's not really a reason to take them. Druids are interesting. The problem is that they start with earth magic, which in Might Magic 6 is the least useful type of magic in the game. You can skip earth magic entirely and probably never notice. Completely serious. There's no reason to throw any points in earth in the game. Uh, it's because of the way the game calculates how much damage things are done. And yeah, I'm not going to go too far in depth on that. So druids do get both um, what's called elemental schools, which is the air, fire, water, earth, and also self schools, which is body, mind, spirit. They don't get mirror path, though, which is light and dark. Uh, sorcerers and clerics, upon promotion, actually, I don't think it requires promotion to get it, but you can later on in the game join the Guild of Light or the Guild of Darkness and gain light and dark spells, which are extremely powerful. Long story short, I tend to go for a very heavy into magic party. I'm thinking, in order to make things more interesting for people, that I'm actually going to do this. Normally I don't bother bringing a knight, because knights are dumb, but knights can carry basically every non-combat skill in the game. You can just throw on to the knight and have fun. In addition, I'm playing a very heavily modded version of Might Magic 6. This is using the unofficial mods. Um, it patches things, it adds mouse look, it adds a lot of current generation features, or actually probably last generation at this point features. It's also handling the upscaling. So you'll notice that this video is 1440p. This, the uh, other direction, this window here on my monitor is actually 1440 pixels tall. The game is normally 480, 640 by 480. So I'm recording it at the upscaled resolution that it's actually presenting. There may be a little bit of blur and so on, but the textures have been upscaled as much as it's feasible. This is still a game that was released in 1996, so give it some credit. Um, but some of the things that it did would fix a lot of the bugs in the game that made things, well, made swords useless. Basically, you didn't need a sword, because why would you need a sword when you have an ancient weapon that has a reaction time of zero, which means you just constantly attack with no pause. That's been eliminated from the game. There's a lot of other bugs that have been eliminated from the game. So I'm going to play this a little more balanced than normal. The only other thing I've thought about doing is instead of a knight going with a paladin, this gives me another source of healing, which is very useful in the beginning of the game. But I have fewer hit points. It's a mixed bag. Paladins start with spirit magic, which is one of the weaker of the magic skills. Uh, mine's probably the weakest of self, but there's one spell in mind that makes it totally worth it to go after. Um, I don't know. Paladin or Knight? I haven't played in, with a Knight in a long time. Let's do that. So I'm adjusting their stats. I have, if you can see, you notice I'm actually including the Mouse Grocer this time because, well, it's a Windows game. Uh, you see I have normally 50 bonus points that I can spend across all of the stats. So what I'm doing is that I'm reducing the stats that don't matter. Um, luck actually does matter quite a bit, it's just that there's something in the beginning part of the game that allows you to get luck up to a certain level easily. So there's no real reason to put any points in luck and every reason in the world to take away as many as possible. Um, oh, I should change the portraits. Because these portraits are dumb. It also randomizes the names whenever you change the portraits. I can't hear their voices, which is unfortunate because some of their voices are terrible. Um... We're going to go with, yeah, there's only four women and eight men. Good job, game. Um, I'm going to make you a knight. Eye patch guy is going to be a cleric. Anita can be a sorcerer. Yeah, we'll make Anita a sorcerer. 
Choose me. Choose me. I'm ready. Choose me. Choose me or suffer. You want to win? Come on, choose me. I'll be fit for your party. I just love the ridiculousness of that hair. I'm going to have to include that. Um, let's see. Names. Those names are passable, I guess. Um. Yeah, I'm not going to bother naming things special, unfortunately. Sorry. Anyway, so let me explain the stats really fast. And this video is basically just going to be explanation. I'm going to do very little in the actual game. So Might controls your damage output. Um, and also your chance to hit with weapons, if I remember correctly. Even though accuracy sounds like it should be. So Might is completely useless for people who aren't going to use weapons. Um... Technically, these two will end up using weapons, but for the time being, I'm just going to drop their knight down to something abysmal. Uh, 14 is average on a stat, which means that any stat point below 14 means you're taking penalties, um, and any stat point above means that you're getting bonuses. It's diminishing returns. I think the highest they account for, is was it 250 or 500? And yes, you can totally have stats in the 500s. That's entirely possible um intellect intellect is used for spell points on sorcerers there's no other use for intellect in the game so people who aren't sorcerers or archers because they have sorcerer like magic have no reason to have intellect personality personality is spell points for clerics and paladins as a result which means cleric should totally have personality nobody else needs it endurance is for hit points accuracy is for ranged attacks um, I will have ranged attacks on this knight, so I definitely don't want to drop accuracy. In fact, I'm probably going to bump it up a bit. And there's actually some spells that use accuracy. It's oh, bad. They fix that in Might Magic 7, where there's no spells that use accuracy. But I'm going to ignore it anyway, because those spells are stupid. Um, actually, I'm not going to drop accuracy any, because eventually all of my characters will have bows. In this game, every character can use a bow. Not every character can use any other weapon, but bows are the one exception that everybody can use. Speed, that is turn order and reaction time. So this is a hybrid turn-based real-time game, which is the game is real-time until you enter turn-based mode. Turn-based mode is pause. It's if you've ever played a game like Baldur's Gate or any of the classic C computer RPGs, having real time with pause and then give orders during pause. It's kind of like that, except that instead of it being pause, you actually enter turn-based mode where you give orders to each of your characters on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. You can't move in turn-based mode in Might Magic 6, though. That's a feature of 7 and 8. Anyway, speed allows your turn to come up more often, and also when you make attacks or get hit to react and to... Whenever you make an attack, you have a delay until your next initiative. Same if you get hit, you'll have a delay until your next initiative. Speed allows you to reduce that delay some. Finally, luck. The game never tells you what luck is useful for, but it's useful for two things in general. First off, luck is used as a bonus to each of your resistances. So fire resistance, air resistance, you get the idea. Um, so... Having negative luck means I effectively have negative resistances. The game won't tell you that, but you have that. Um, in addition, it's also used for some of the skill checks for some of the skills. Uh, for instance, um, perception, I think, might be partially luck-based. I know Disarm Trap definitely is. And I don't remember what else. doesn't matter. We're not going to use Disarm Trap in this run at all. So, um... I should divvy out these points a little bit more. So I am maxing out everybody's spellcasting stats. And knights, I'm going to count as having endurance as their spellcasting stat, basically. Uh, I think I'll also max out their might. I've got five points left. Like that, maybe? So, um, 
for endurance for increasing hit points or also intellect and personality for increasing spell points it is retroactive so if later on i increase my stats that means that the moment i increase the stats my spell points or hit points will increase at the same time so it's not vital for me to have the maximum amount of hit points right at the start having said that I am going to be fighter trap disarming a lot of things at the start, so I want to make sure there's somebody with really good hit points. Uh, usually I just make the cleric do it, but in this case, I have a knight. I'm going to make the knight do it. And accuracy I'll leave alone, I guess, actually. That'll work. So, um, skills. So I can actually right click over these skills and it'll tell you what the skill does. Don't necessarily believe the help text in this game. Uh, it's the way the game meant to have it work, but there's a lot of bugs in what ends up happening. Um, I believe at this point, everything's matching the help text. So what this means is that for each rank in sword that I have, my attack bonus, which is my chance to hit increases. Uh, at expert level, it will reduce my recovery time, effectively increasing my speed for using swords. And at master level, it allows me to use a sword in the left hand, which is actually useful now that it's patched, because prior to patching, you would have two swords. So you do, if you have the same sword twice, you'd be doing double the damage, except that you have the response times from both swords, which means that you're doing double the damage and half the number of turns. It's effectively useless. They fix that though, so it's fine. Um, so my other skills, I can use dagger, except I already have two characters with daggers. What I want to do for reference is that I want to have the ability to use whatever weapon I want in this game. Um, and I have the ability to use any type of armor that I want because knights can wear a plate, clerics can wear a chain, and sorcerers can wear leather armor. So bow skill. Bow skill, as you can tell, it's the same type of thing normal for weapon skills usually adds to attack bonus expert usually reduces recovery time in this case master allows you to fire two arrows every attack which is kind of nice it's normally not worth mastering bow in my mind because you've got better weapon better attacks bodybuilding increases your hit points so your base class bonus four for knights um and it increases by one for or it increases by two on knights every level, uh, every promotion, and increases by one for everybody else. So at maximum promotion, which is champion, I want to say, that is eight hit points per level. If you're level 50, that's an extra plus 400 hit points. Bodybuilding's really nice. But we're level one. This adds four hit points. Four. We are not using bodybuilding to start. Axe. I'm actually thinking about using axe because I normally don't use axes in this game. Axe is very similar to the other weapon skills, attack time, recovery time, except that the master skill is adding to damage. So in theory, axes are some of the strongest weapons in the game as a result. In practice, usually not. There's shields. Shields are usually nice. Bonus to shield just adds to armor class. The downside with shields is that it reduces your recovery time, or increases your recovery time, I should say, which means that you're slower. It's a trade-off, and early on, usually it's useful to grab a shield, but it's usually not useful to bother throwing any points into it, because it's just adding one, two, or three armor class each time that you do it, and you've got better things to do than just add to armor class. Perception. Perception is a chance to notice things. So when you're walking around, you'll just see a red dot on the screen. And what that means is that your character succeeded in the perception role to notice traps. Uh, it also gives you green dots to notice, hey, look, there's a secret thing here. There's probably treasure in it. Um, you are actually required in this game to have expert perception. You cannot beat the game without exploiting some glitches, I should say, without expert perception. You can't do it even if you know where everything's at. So just as a heads up, that is a thing. I will need expert perception, but I don't need it right away. Spear, very similar weapon to so, uh, to axe, except in this case, instead of it reducing recovery time, it adds to armor class, which is interesting. Also, spears can be wielded one or two-handed. 
So spear is a really useful weapon at the start of the game as a result. It The game doesn't represent your increase in range to hit, so it's effectively a melee weapon just like any other. But pretty early on, it's kind of a useful skill. Chainmail. This is for armor. Um, yeah, should mention leather armor, uh, which only the knight would start with. All three of these generally have the... Or all of them generally have the same bonuses, I guess you would say, where the normal is adding to armor class, expert level is reducing the recovery penalty, and master level is eliminating the recovery penalty. For chain, it's the exact same thing as leather. The main difference is that chain armor, one, has a nastier recovery penalty in general, and two, it's better. I'm not going to bother with chain, though, because my knight's going to eventually get plate instead, and it won't take very long for me to get plate. It just requires money. Uh, my cleric will have chain, so I'm not going to bother throwing chain onto the knight. It's not worth it. Finally, there's disarm trap. Disarm trap is a really useful skill. It allows you to disarm traps. I know this is groundbreaking, but pretty much every single chest in the game is trapped. Yep. Disarm trap is probably one of the most useful skills in the game, unless you have a sorcerer. So there is a, or I'm sorry, a cleric. There is a mind spell called telekinesis. It allows you to remotely in enable or remotely trigger something which also includes opening chests which means that you could just sneak way far back from the chest use telekinesis open the chest and the trap will go off in the room instead of where you're at which means you can avoid most traps in the game also if you have a high enough perception skill you won't be hit by traps anyway perception plus luck so i am not taking disarm trap because there's no reason for me to I think I will actually be taking axe, because I normally don't play with axes, and I want to try. Cleric time. So, another weapon in this game is staff. Oh, sorry, I should go mace. Mace is interesting, because it has a chance to stun. Um, the interesting part is that this was glitched. It says chance to stun equal to skill. It's actually a flat 10%, which is bad. Um... If it would be chance of stun equal to skill, you would have a higher than 10% chance the moment you become a master. So, it's it was bugged. I believe it's no longer bugged. So, maces could actually be useful now. And you notice that there's no reduction of recovery time. Maces are slow. Axes are faster than maces, eventually. Got none. Staff. It's attack bonus armor class. And chance to e chance to stun. So this is useful if you want to throw it on a sorcerer that's never going to get into melee combat because at least you get an armor class bonus. The downside is that why are you wasting skill points on staff? You can spend your skill points on a lot of other skills and be better off. Heck, if you really want to, in Earth Magic, there's a stone skin spell that will allow you to buff somebody's armor class, and it buffs it higher than getting the staff skill. There's no reason for the staff skill in this game, other than there's actually a halfway decent staff artifact later on. Repair item. Repair item is practically essential, and I'm almost certainly going to be keeping repair item on this cleric. Um, repair item allows you to repair items. The level of the item indicates how much repair item skill that you need. There's actually no reason in the game to go Master Repair Item, because Expert at the same ranking as what you would need for Master is actually enough to repair every item in the game. Um, repair Item is essential because there's a lot of enemies in the game that will break equipment, especially dragons. They love breaking equipment, and if you're in turn-based mode, you can just go, Oh, my axe broke. Hey, Cleric, would you mind repairing this? If they repair it, you hand it back to the knight, and the knight attacks, because you haven't taken an action that entire time. Repairing an item in the middle of combat. Might magic staple. Uh, there's shield again. So mind, and you've got body magic, mind magic, and spirit magic. They don't really tell you what they do here. But starting with the magical skill means that you start with two spells in it. If you buy the magical skill later on, you don't start with any magic in it. You just have to buy every spell. So it's a way of saving money. 
Meditation. Meditation is the opposite of bodybuilding. Meditation increases the amount of spell points that you get in the same way that bodybuilding increases the amount of hit points that you get, which means it's worthless to start with. Identify item. This is an essential skill in the game. You need to be able to identify items, to be able to do pretty much anything. Otherwise, you will have unidentified items and have to constantly pay money to have them identified. And they could be complete garbage items. Um, you need to identify pr almost every item that you receive in the game. So identify items, great, except for the fact that you can hire an NPC that has unlimited identify item in the starting city. And it also increases your total amount of experience points. So yeah, there's no reason to take the ID item skill, which is a shame because I actually really like the skill. Finally, there's speaking of useless skills, there's diplomacy. So when you talk to NPCs, if your reputation isn't within their ideal range, then they will not talk to you and you have to either, uh, that is, beg, bribe, or threaten them to talk to them. And when you do so, you end up taking a reputation loss. That's it. You know what else you can do? Talk to somebody else. You don't need the diplomacy skill at all in the game. It is worthless. There's absolutely no reason to take diplomacy. So I am going to take... Uh, do I want spirit or mind? I think I'm going to take mind in this case. So I thought about leaving behind repair item. I can buy that pretty cheap. So that might not be a bad idea. I'll come back to that. Sorcerers. Sorcerers basically have the same skill set that clerics do, except sorcerers can't wear chainmail. Clerics don't even start with armor as an option. They can start with a shield. Uh, sorcerers can't wear chainmail. They don't have the same weapon skills. Um, clerics follow the old AD&D rules for clerics, which is no bladed weapons. So they have staff and mace. Sorcerers have dagger and staff instead, and also ancient weapons. But everybody has ancient weapons. And also bows, because bows don't count as a blade. Um, nobody can start with a bow other than the knight, unfortunately. Or an archer, of course. Um, it's unfortunate, because I'm going to need bows pretty fast. And I can't get a bow skill in the town that I start in. At all. But that's okay. We'll take care of it. Um... In this case, I already mentioned all of the skills that they have available, so what I'm going to end up doing is this. And then the other skill. Well, I could take Repair Item on somebody else. I mean, so none of the skills in the game have a, well, you're a sorcerer, you can't expert or master Repair Item. It's more a matter of where you're spending your skill points. Mages are pretty much always going to spend skill points on magic. I'll spend some skill points elsewhere, but that's their main focus. Knights, you don't really need that many skill points of weapons to be awesome. You also don't need very many skill points in armor to be awesome, so you tend to have a lot of spare skill points, so I'd prefer to have the repair item on the knight. But, I mean, I guess leather armor, so I don't die as easily? That's not that bad of an idea, actually. So, here's my party. Um, I wish I had better names. I should, probably should have prepared some names. Holy crap, I've been recording for a half an hour already. This is why I told you I'm probably not going to be getting too much into the game. Because there was a lot for me to talk about. Uh, let's see. Other things I should mention. Um, nope, that's about it. Let's go. Welcome to New Sorpical. See? Welcome to New Sorpical. This is New Sorpical. Uh, Sorpical was the starting town in Might Magic 1, I want to say. And this is New Sorpical. Hold on a moment. I need to pick up the traditional items. There's always horseshoes. All right. This is what characters have to start. They have a club. Yep. That's it. They have a club. So I am going to equip Leather Armor. So this axe does 4d2 points of damage, which means that you roll four two-sided dice, and you'll end up doing somewhere between two and eight points of damage. This does 3d3 points of damage, which makes this strictly worse than this. 
which is why I'm okay with starting with a sword in my hand. Um, if I remember correctly, swords are actually faster than axes anyway. Here's the crossbow. It does 42 points of damage. And then each character will start with like a ring or something else. This is totally cell bait. This is cell bait. This is the letter. Sparkling ring, that is cell bait. I'm just gonna move the... Yep. All right, this is quest item. Anyway, you start with a bunch okay. of magic. So you're yes. going to learn the magic. Okay. I'll show the magic in a bit. And you start with a mace, which is 2d4. 4d2 is a lot better than 2d4. Um, although there's a lower... It basically makes your damage in the middle, which is you're more likely to do damage that's average compared to a mace or something doing 1d8 points of damage. That's cell bait. You have more magic. Okay. Armor. The club does 1d3 points of damage, and it's worth 1 money it's useless this does 2d2 points of damage it's slightly better but it's faster so yay that is cell bait nobody started with a good ring dang it so the ring starts are completely random it's a random weak item which means that you can actually get an enchanted ring to start which is nice you can't get anything else enchanted though so sucks to be me also nobody started with any um alchemy ingredients which is weird so you can see the skills that we started with those are pretty typical um horseshoes so horseshoes you can use them to gain two skill points so i'm going to save them at the moment and let's go ahead and show you the spells so yep the knight has all the spells let me tell you so every character who has magic is going to start with two spells in that area the first and second level spell so first level spell is Spirit Arrow. This spell is completely useless. It does 1d6 points of damage. Also, it can miss, which makes the spell kind of useless. And also Bless, which is definitely not useless. Uh, initially, it just gives you a bonus to hit on one character. It lasts for an hour plus five minutes per point of skill, so an hour and five minutes at the moment. But at expert level, it affects the entire party, and Bless is very useful early on. Meditation temporarily increases people's stats. This is useless. Because it doesn't last long enough to make a difference. The higher level version of this, which is light magic, is much more useful. And remove fear. Once I have something that will cause fear, that could be useful. Um, basically, this is the way all of the status effect removing spells in the game work. Including raising the dead and resurrecting. Um... It's three minutes, one hour, and one day per point of skill for a normal expert and master. Finally, we've got Cure Weakness, which is, again, another status effect spell, only weakness happens a lot more often. And First Aid, which is your first healing spell. It is utter garbage, okay. but it's the only one I've got. We've got Torchlight, which allows things to be brighter. This is pretty much required when you go indoors or at night going through dungeons or at night anywhere or indoors going through dungeons i should say um you need torchlight there's no other way around it there's no other spell in the game that replicates it so yep flame arrow this does the exact same thing as spirit arrow only it does a d8 points of damage and costs an additional spell point it also can't hit worth crap and it's useless Wizard Eye. Wizard Eye is the best spell in the game. It allows you to see things. Allow me to show you. Aha. I don't know the timing because I don't have headphones on. A headphones. Good job, me. So what Wizard Eye does is that you'll see all these dots in the corner. You'll also see red dots for enemies, which there's enemies over here. And at higher levels, you'll actually see blue dots that indicate items. Um, this allows you to see things, and that is extremely useful. Also is Static Charge, which is the only starting spell of any good. Because this does 2 to 6 points of damage, but it doesn't miss. Do you see what I mean yet by the spells being completely worthless in this game to start? It's just... 
Static Charge is actually a useful spell. So that's good. There's another one as well. So in Water Magic, you start with Awaken. It's the same status effect type of spell, except this one hits everybody. Awaken's useful in the beginning of the game when you're roaming around the countryside and just camp to sleep. I don't typically do that for most of the game. In fact, I just don't sleep for most of the game. But early on, if you camp out in the middle of the countryside and a random battle happens, part of your party is going to be asleep. And I think it's based off of perception as to who's asleep and who's awake. But part of your party will be asleep. If your water mage is awake, however, you can just immediately cast the Awaken spell and everybody wakes up. There's also some creatures later on in the game that will just cause you to fall asleep. Cold Beam, it's identical to Static Charge, except it's cold damage instead of electric damage. Um, both are equally useful. There's about the same number of creatures in the game that resist one versus the other. And to be quite honest, we're not going to have to worry about resistances anytime that we're using these spells. So, first thing we're going to do is stop by a lonely night. And this is actually in the manual and also in the opening scroll that I skipped uh, that you have, I should actually show you, you have the letter. This is a letter that um, your characters had picked up that's the hint of the plot that's happening. You have done well, and I hereby promote you to High Priest of the Second Circle. There's a sum of gold waiting for you in the hands of Andover Potbello in New Serpical, and that he will turn over to you if you tell him the Sandman sent you and show him the seal in this letter. Sandman, I like that. The handling of the Roland affair was masterful, and I especially like the snowstorm touch. It really put the fear in him, didn't it? Superstitious fool. His removal has moved our timetable ahead by at least two years and spared us the trouble of assassinating him at a more delicate time. All arrangements are in place. My minions have engineered the recall of Queen Catherine to her homeland in Arathia. That's Might Magic 7 for reference. Uh, to attend the funeral of her father. She will not return this year, and that only leaves her worthless brat Nikolai and that idiot regent Wilbert Humphrey running things at the palace. The people have begun to sense that something is wrong, that perhaps the gods are angry, that perhaps the Iron Fists have lost the mandate of heaven. Name drop. By the way, this is the last time that phrase is used. Just a few more disasters and there may well be a full-scale rebellion. And we will be waiting at the breach, ready to step in and tell the sheep what to do and when to do it. Sheep, that is a very key clue, by the way. Already our temples spread across the land, offering aid to those displaced by disasters and comfort to the bereaved. Yes. Remain in New Serpical and stay out of sight. When the time is right, you will be contacted and given further instructions. So take heart and know that our plan proceeds smoothly and we will be ruling this world soon. Your position in our hierarchy will be very high. Xenofex. You find out who Xenofex is later on. Anyway, this is Andover Potbello. He is a follower of Ba. Remember what I said about leading sheep and temples to help lead sheep? In this game, the animal flavored temple of choice is Ba. Ba, my friend, as they like to put it. Uh, in every Might and Magic game, I don't know about 9 and beyond, I've barely played 9, and 10 is completely unrelated to the rest of the series. There is some type of animal-based cult. Uh, there's multiple in 4 and 5. Uh, in 6 and 7, it's Ba. And in 8, it was... What was the 8 one? Anyway, there's another one in 8. So, Ba, my friend. Oh, uh, I thought you were a member of my temple. Sorry, my mistake. So you can return the letter. You get a thousand gold for this. Oh, the seal. Here, I'm supposed to give you this money. Now go away before we're seen together. Somebody will get suspicious. Don't try to say I didn't pay you. You got your gold. And then he will also give you a quest. This quest is an evil quest for reference. You will take a reputation loss for taking it. I have no intent of bothering to take it. And you can talk to various people. And yes, this game is very insensitive. So my apologies for any Romani that may be watching. Um... You have innkeep, you can fill up your packs. Um, the way buying food in this game works is that you fill it up to a point. So in this case, I would spend two gold to not get anything because I have seven food already. 
And that's it. Uh, we're going to stop by the wells. This well heals people. I believe this well is the yeah, temporary might, which is useful to have at the beginning. This well restores magic points. There's also, or sorry, fountain, not well. There's also a well on this side or the other side. The other side, I think. There's a well around here that will give you a bonus based off of your luck stat, or lack thereof. Here it is. Plus two luck permanent. Basically increases your luck up to a point. Yeah, it's used twice. And it won't allow you your luck to go higher than a certain number, which is the reason why I dropped everybody's luck early on, is because it's not useful. You can see my lovely chances of hitting over here on these guys. It's like they have a negative one chance to hit with a mace. They have a negative three chance to hit with their dagger. They're terrible. My knight is the only character who actually has a chance of hitting anything at all. Anyway. Um, yep, so I need to... I can... They're already differing amounts of experience. Interesting. I haven't done much. All I've done is return the... Hmm. Anyway, that's where you go to level up. This is where you go to train up to expert level spirit, which requires rank 4. Expert of every skill in the game requires rank 4. Masters are actually different based off of what the skill is. This is a mind magic expert. This is body magic expert. And his daughter. I love how... So the way the game generates things to talk about... Not something I need to worry about right now. Um, the way the game generates things that NPCs talk about have nothing to do with what the NPC is. So, the NPC is a child. So it's like, I hate school. My father says I need to work hard so I can get a good job and maybe even learn to study magic. Who cares about that? I just want to play. And then it's, when the Temple of Ba moved to out of that old temple outside of town, all of the prob little problems we've been having just went away. Or, when the temple... Yeah. Can you imagine a child saying the phrase something unwholesome so yeah anyway we are walking around and i want to find a certain type of npc not an arms master arms masters are not what i'm looking for what was this well yeah that well doesn't give me anything miller barrister surf smith Barrister. The NPCs are random, and if I save and load, it will actually re-randomize. Guard. Weaver. Some NPCs in this game are useless. So, they just ha say they have no skills to offer. And they just give you some information. I have the game memorized, so I don't really need to talk to generic NPCs very often. But I am looking for specific types of NPCs. Laborer. Chef. Weapons Master. Smith. Barrister. I've already looked at them. Scholar. Scholar. Hello. People have been talking about how you like to commit crimes, Regina. I don't know. I don't like how that sounds, so I don't want to talk to you. This is what I'm talking about, about they don't necessarily like you based off of reputation. I have no reputation for reference. It's zero. Um, reputation actually having a number here is part of the patch. Normally it just has average, and you have no idea what that means. Scholar, I think, is the one that I want. Let me save really fast. Oh, I forgot to erase my old saves. That's fine. We'll just wipe this out and call this stream save one. Hello. I will beg you, please join me. Yep. I studied under Lord Newton in Mist for eight years to learn how to tell one magic item from another. I'll work for you for 500 gold to start, plus a 5% share of all the gold we find. So what does that mean in game terms? Unlimited item identification and a 5% bonus on all experience gained. This is why you don't need ID item. And I'm just hiring her right now. Even though that makes me a little more poor and I'm going to get less money, it's totally worth it. Who else is around? Smith. Banker. I don't have enough money for a banker. 
alchemist, tailor, cartographer. Hey, you over there. Now, what did the alchemist do again? That's right, repairing broken magic items. Unless if it's a piece of armor or weapon. This is the part I don't understand in this game, is that ID item, I mean, repair item and ID item are both any type of item, the skills themselves. When you hire somebody like this, for ID item, you just saw, I hired somebody who can identify everything in the game, so there's no limit. I can identify end game things right now. And, and I get a 5% bonus on experience. For this NPC, for 100 gold less and 1% less, I can only repair magic items. I don't get it. Some enemies? I can't do much to most of these. Boop. You can't hit at a range yet. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just sniping them off at a range because I can. Gives me a little bit of XP. And I can easily get my magic back, so it's not that big of a deal. And done. Oh, Matt, Wizard Eye's already worn off. So let's recast that. And let's go loot the bodies. So you notice it says followers take a certain amount. They basically take, in this case, it's 5% rounded up. This person teaches expert learning training. Learning is a skill that I didn't have the ability to start with. Only druids can do that. And I need to buy the learning skill fast. So what learning does is increases the amount of XP you get. So it's practically essential. There's a couple of essential skills that I don't have at the moment. Learning and merchant are the big ones. And I don't think I can learn merchant here, but I can learn, or no, I can learn merchant. I can't learn learning if I remember right. How are you? Bodybuilding meditation. Pleased to meet you. Here's membership. Thank you. You should just always buy membership to every place. Thank it's easy. Also, this person is a collector of rare and exotic creatures, such as cobra eggs. He will buy cobra eggs from you. It's useful information to know. This person just wants work. Hey, you. <sighs> um, this is mostly it for this video. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything. Oh, oh, I can go to the Blade's End and see what they have for me. Yeah, you see the red dots all the way in the bottom right hand corner. So these are weapons. I can learn armor skills as well, but I can't learn useful ones. So actually, this place was probably worthless for me to pay money to. The Buccaneers Guild, I'm going to have to wait for a bit. What time is it? 11.04 a.m. I'm going to have to wait a lot of bit. There's no reason for me to do that now. Town Hall will also give me a quest. Namely, they've kidnapped Sherry Carnegie, an old healer loved by the townspeople. So I need to rescue Sherry. And that's what the mayor wants to give me. Janice, the clerk, on the other hand, will tell me of a quest for Goblin Watch. Just south of town is an old keep called Goblin Watch. It was originally built to help keep the town safe from goblin raids, but times have been so peaceful recently that we haven't used it. And as a result, goblins took it over, and they changed the lock. Also, this week's bounty hunt is an earth elemental. If I kill an earth elemental in a week... I think I may have caused a game glitch at that point. Um, the bounties are random, and it's end of month. If you kill something like that, you can come back, you get money. It's useful for some early money if the bounties aren't stupid things like a freaking earth elemental. <coughs> also, you get, apparently today's Tuesday. My reputation is now bad. 
because I had to beg her to join me. It's okay, though. Minus 10 is not really that big of a deal. But it does mean that things are more expensive for me and people are less likely to like me. But it's also early on in the game. It doesn't really matter. Um, Don't touch the merchant. So these are various special items. They will always phrase things as I'm willing to virtually give it away for X amount of gold. It's because I don't have the merchant skill. So the every merchant in the game assumes that I'm a rube as a result. You notice that the actual value is 350. Um, later on in the game, the difference between the sale price and the actual value become more and more ridiculous as time goes on. All right. I think this is probably a good point to end this particular episode. Um, let's see. It's 3 p.m. I might be able to throw in one more episode and get myself a little bit further ahead. So I will save it here. And I will talk to you next time. Good night, Internet. I'll see you tomorrow. Or whatever day that... Whatever the next day is. Yeah. I'm cool. <laughs>